NHS! Save our NHS! Flats don't pay the bills! 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 One, two, three, four, five! Keep our NHS alive! One, two, three, four, five! Keep our NHS alive! One, two, three, four, five! Keep our NHS alive! Now we're uh, at a protest live now at Medaside in Congleton. We're with independent councillor, Mr. Rob Morton, who's been very ill recently. How are you, Rob? Uh, still not right. Uh, I got I got rushed in hospital just after Christmas, and I was absolutely dumbfounded by. I think there was 179 people in the A and E waiting room. Obviously, I skipped them all because I was so ill. Uh, there was even a case that I overheard. A guy come in with severe chest pains, and they said, take him straight through to the whatever ward they go. And the nurse's response was, "There's no, we can't, there's no beds for him. You just have to take him in the side ward. So, for me, the NHS is, is totally overstretched. Um, they need help now before it absolutely collapses. And we've also got... Lisa Miller was with us at the Green Party. Hi, good morning, guys. It's Lisa Miller for Congleton South East. Yeah, registered nurse of 16 years, so had to attend this protest today to defend our NHS, to defend nursing ratios, and to defend adequate pay, adequate staffing, and the sustainability of and future-proofing the NHS. It's certainly loud down here, isn't it? You've got plenty of support. Absolutely, yeah. We've had great support from the public. It's been amazing. Listen. Yeah. I think all parties have come together really on this haven't they yeah absolutely we've all been completely unified on this and it's no wonder because really we've had 12 years of the tories and unfortunately it's, everything's been run into the ground so it's time that we all unite and unfortunately we've got to step up because once the nhs is gone it's gone for good well when i say all parties there's some parties that are supporting more than others it's the women equality yeah. party independence and the greens i mean you really are Oh, Lib Dems as well. Yeah, yeah, all of us are here, yeah. Every, yeah. Representatives from all across, the all parties. Yeah, it's, well, it's something important and it's good to see the support. So, it sure is. Right. Here we go. No. Oh, oh we've got, we got Susie with us. Oh, and Kay. Kay, we've got two here, two councillors. Who should we interview first? Kay, do you want to speak? I organise the thing. <laughs> That's it. Well, you should do. You're hiding in the middle of that crowd. Yeah. It wasn't you playing the bongos just then, was it? It was not, it was not me playing the bongos, no. We just organised it. <laughs> Actually, a friend of mine who's a midwife, a retired midwife, reached out to me and said, what can we do, Kay, what can we do? And I said, well, we just need to tell Fiona Bruce and the Tory government what we think, loud and clear. But change has got to happen. Either this government's got to make the change happen or we've got to have a change of government. And I think most of the people here prefer the latter option. As we've had 12 years of failure for the NHS with this Tory government. They promised us so much. They promised so much. We were promised 6,000 more GPs, 50,000 more nurses. Remember 350 million a week? All these broken promises. They promised and promised 40 new hospitals. Where are those? And here in Congleton, we've got our War Memorial Hospital at Minor Injuries Unit still not open. And it's not because the professionals don't want to open it. There are just not enough nurses. There are just not enough healthcare professionals. And that is a long term decision by this government. They've chosen to run down our NHS. They need to stand up and admit it. And we need to get a government that's going to support our healthcare system. Well, thanks for talking to us, Kay. I think we'll move amongst the crowd. Thank now. you very much. Thanks for coming. That's no problem. Now, then it was uh, Susie. We've got all the councillors out today. How are you, Susie? You're all right. Very well. How are you? Hi, Sharon. How are you? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we've even got the dogs protesting now. Have you got anything for say for yourself? No. No. Just keeping quiet. So, Susie, the NHS. It must be very important to you. Well, I, it isn't necessarily as important to me as it is to the, some of the older people that we have in our community. And Cheshire East has a lot of older people. I think it's something like about 35%. So they'll be the ones that are suffering because of this strike. And it, it shouldn't be allowed. I just, you know, the government needs to step up, really. 
They definitely do, they definitely do. But it's good to see the support and, like I said, cross-party support. I know, are the, are the Tories here? Uh, well, I say cross-party support. I think nearly every party's here. Uh, there's a big independence presence, Green Party, Women's Equality, uh, Lib Dems, I can see a Lib Dem, can we get that? Yeah, Lib Dems are here. So it's it's great to see, really, isn't it? I think, you know, what we can do about it, I don't know, but the government needs to get off our NHS and start funding it properly, paying our workers what they deserve and sorting it out rather than paying fines for not wearing your seatbelt. I mean, it's just mad. Yeah, it is, actually, yeah. Something so important. Anyway, thanks for talking to us, Susie. Have a great day. And we're still at the protest, and we're, another, we're with another Green Party candidate. And you are, sir? Hi, I'm Rich McCarthy. How are you going up? Oh, very well. I'm fine, thank you very much, uh, fortunately. But, uh, but we're all more than a little bit angry, I suppose, about the, the way things are going under the, in the country at the moment. Um, it's crazy that, that nurses are having to go out on strike just to get the government to actually listen to them and to talk to them about their pay. And when we see how much things have gone up in the last year, then surely pay should be going up as well. But it isn't just the pay, is it? Because when I've talked to nurses, they've said it's about working conditions as well. Absolutely, it's working conditions. You know, they've been... There are 100,000 people short, and they've been short for years and years and years. And they've been in emergency working conditions for at least three years, three years solid now. It used to be that we had a crisis, well, for the last decade we've had a crisis every winter. Now we've got a permanent crisis. And who can live like that? You know, it's no wonder that thousands, tens of thousands of nurses are leaving the job, leaving something that they've committed their lives to because they just can't take it anymore. And, you know, your heart goes out to them. They would be paid better in a different job. They wouldn't have to be having this you know, masses more responsibility than they're supposed to be having because there's only one or two nurses on a, st on a, a ward that's supposed to have five and, and there should be doctors around as well. Then, you know, all of that is missing. That's far too much responsibility, far too much pressure and it's constant, never-ending for the nurses. We've got Olga with us now. Olga, you've put your bongo down that you were banging before. Have you got anything to add? I just totally agree with Richard. Uh, we've been in crisis for years, and uh, uh, NHS waiting list, it's already probably 7 million plus. And what have been done? Nothing has been done. There is no negotiation, there is no proper conversation. And Green Party of England and Wales is the only party from the beginning supported uh, strikes of nurses, of train workers, of anybody who demands uh, proper pay, proper working conditions. No, uh, the pay rise shouldn't be only for the bankers and, and investors and everybody who's rich. It should be for ordinary working class people. Definitely. Well, thanks for those kind words and wise words, Olga. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, claps don't pay the bills. 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 Now we're with the Labour Party. Now I can't believe you guys. Just... Uh, are not fond of Fiona Bruce? <laughs> well, I think that's a bit of an understatement, really. I mean, uh, you know, what is it like? I mean, when you look at the voting record and you just think, you know, how, how many constituents is she actually standing up and representing? At the moment, you know, we have this massive NHS crisis, and what did she do this week? She voted for the second reading of a bill that threatens to sack nurses and key workers if they go on strike, simply for standing up for, for better standards, better pay, safer staffing. Um, it, it, it really is ridiculous. So, we, you know, we, just off that, never mind the rest of the awful record, Fiona Bruce, I, I believe, just doesn't represent us in the Congress and constituency. Can you tell us if you're going to be standing against her yet? at the next election, because you're in the running. Uh, I, well, I can't say anything yet. Obviously, we haven't actually had the process to go ahead yet. Obviously, it's something I am going to consider. I know we've got quite a few candidates who could possibly go forward, and it's up to the local members to decide. But again, it's something I would look at closer to the time. My focus is going to be doing what I can within the party to obviously promote the party, promote what we're standing for, uh, to help us in the national elections, but also the local elections that are coming up as well, and, and representing my local residents.
And we've got Heather with us. You're standing, aren't you, at the elections? Hi, Stuart. Um, yes, I'm standing in the local elections um, for Congleton Town Council and Cheshire East. So, yeah, hopefully we'll get some Labour representation. Congleton needs Labour. We need Labour's voice. Um, the country is starting to fall apart under 13 years of Conservative rule. And all the values that Labour stands for, for, you know, equality, working rights and conditions, you know, all the fantastic things, the environment, the green policies that they have, we, are, we have better policies than the Conservatives. The Conservatives have failed. Um, the economy hasn't grown for 13 years. They don't know what they're doing. They, it's absolute chaos. And it's not, it's not just Fiona Bruce that we want out of Congleton. It's every Conservative MP out. Because they don't deserve to get in in the next general election. They really don't. And it's as simple as that. They have deliberately underfunded public services. And that's their policy. You know, they, they believe in a small state. It's a political choice. And that's why all the public services are crumbling. And the NHS is the most important, one of the most important institutions that we have, you know, in Britain. So, yeah, it's very disappointing that the Tories have underfunded it for years. It's a deliberate decision. And we need them out. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us today, Heather. We're still at the latest protest. They keep protesting here, don't they, Susie? Have you noticed? It's like protest corner, this is. Well, they're hoping Fiona Bruce, Bruce will be in her office and she'll hear the noise, so that's why. Well, really, they should come on a weekday, shouldn't they, and not a Saturday? <laughs> yes, she's never here on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. So they're organising on the wrong days, really. <laughs> well, if they want Fiona Bruce to hear, they need to be here when she's here, so, yeah. So, uh, what was I going to say now? being a little bit put off there by the sound. Now, we were talking before, weren't we, Susie, about how important the NHS is? Yes. I mean, without the NHS, we'd have a lot of suffering. If you look at countries that don't have an NHS, you know, there's a second-class society, so at least it's there for everybody. But if they're striking and the government can't come to an agreement, then it isn't there for everybody. I think something like 500,000 operations have been... Um, I put on hold just from one day. Some people are saying this is all part of a plan by the government to privatise the NHS. Um, well, what, what they generally do, a bit like the War Memorial Hospital, they reduce services, so there's, there's no services there that you can use, and then when they say, well, not enough people use it, then they've got the statistics to back that up, but not enough people use it because they've reduced the number of services that they offer. So it is, it's like um, a stealth way of getting rid of, of certain things. So, yeah, I would agree. And we've got Kay with us again. Thanks for that, Susie. You're welcome. Thanks. We've got Kay with us again. It's, it's all going well, isn't it, Kay? Yeah, it's just great to see everybody here from all these different groups. So we've got four political parties. We've got the Women's Equality Party, Labour, the Lib Dems and the Greens. Then we've got people from uh, representing other groups, uh, Women Reclaim and lots of other interest groups that just what are interested in the health and well-being of the community. So it's fantastic to see people turning out and supporting this cause. I was uh, just saying to Susie, it's almost like becoming protest corner this. This is a third protest round here in less than a year. Well, I think it's a sign of where we're at, isn't it? It's a sign of the country. I mean, look at the country, it's broken. We've got people going out on strike uh, in all different sectors. We've got a cost of living crisis. Our health service is on its knees. And I think most importantly of all today, you know, we've got people, you know, dying in accident emergency because they can't get treatments on time. And the professionals working in the spaces themselves are frustrated and just saying, you know, we need more investment. We need more support from government. And, uh, and people feel disempowered we haven't got an election round the corner what can people do they, they've got to have their voices heard and this is one way of doing it do you think change will come in congleton i hope so i was just talking to a resident actually who said they feel that congleton is very different to what it was five years ago and they think there's a different uh, culture a different spirit in the town very forward looking very inclusive and i think certainly here in congleton it feels like the p political wind has changed and let's hope so well, who knows? Perhaps somebody that we've interviewed today will be standing in the next general election. 
Uh, well, who knows? Let's see. I know quite a few people that are around here today might like to do that. And I think what I'd like to see is collaboration uh, and maybe looking at how we work together to make sure that we do have a new MP at the next general election. Thanks for talking to us, Kay. Now we're with Susan. How are you, Susan? You OK? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. A bit cold, but yeah. <laughs> You're campaigning, aren't you, to be a green... Uh, not green, women's yeah. equality. Women's equality, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you used to be a Green Party member then? No, I've been a women... I've only sort of recently got into politics, so I thought I'd have a go at being um, on the women's equality, particularly because I do a lot in childcare and things like that, and I, I'm, I've been doing some campaigning. Do you remember when we did the last interview we did uh, yeah. about the March of the Mummies in Manchester? So. Yes, that was very successful. Yeah, you, were on, you were on Five Live, weren't you? <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, yeah uh, so that was good. So, yeah, I thought I'd come today, and but it's something we all use the NHS and it's something that we all you know want to um, sort of keep alive and keep going really yeah. it's something we can't take for granted and like I pointed out before we don't want a system oh, well people won't want a system while it is in America where I think most people when they go to the hospital in, in America if they haven't got like insurance they end up bankrupt yeah definitely it's awful and I think uh, you know if you have a problem where you cut your finger off or something you want to be able to get there and get the help that you need and it be functional and you want the staff that are looking after you to be able to provide that care properly and in good conditions so yeah well thanks for talking to us today Susan now I think everybody on Congleton Radio knows Susan Munro. How are you, Susan? I'm great, thank you. Stuart, and how are you? Not so bad. Brilliant. So, of course, you're down at this protest, aren't you? I am. You're a big backer of the NHS. I, absolutely, I am. I'm standing here on behalf of Elizabeth's group. And Elizabeth, it's one of the things she fought for was universal health care for everyone. And so uh, my sign says the NHS will last as long as there are folk with the faith to fight for it. And that was said by Nye Bevan, who was a true Labour man, a true socialist, and he started the NHS, and that's at the basis of all my thoughts about it. It's a wonderful institution, and it's very threatened. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Susan. We appreciate it.